Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Andrew Bottom. I'm the Associate Director for the Global Internship Program here at UCLA. And we're super excited to share with you about the program we have for engineering students in Berlin. So I'm here with a few colleagues of mine that have introduced themselves. So I'll first throw it over to our colleagues from CIE. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julia. I'm the Internship Program Manager for CIE in Berlin. Um, I'll introduce a bit more about what I do with CIE and with UCLA, um, but great to have you here and looking forward to having you potentially in Berlin this summer. Thanks, Julia. And then we also have two student returnees from this past summer that also um, did a global internship in Berlin. So I'll throw it over to John. Hey, everyone. I'm John. I'm a fourth year mechanical engineering student, and I interned at a startup called Trainom uh, in Berlin. And I, you can ask me any questions about that later on, but I did like a manufacturing, I was mainly doing manufacturing over there. Thanks, John. And now I'll throw it to Krish. Hello, everyone. I'm Krish. I'm a fourth year computer science student. And I also, of course, entered in Berlin this past summer at a company called Motion Tag, where I mostly did data science and analytics. So I'm more than happy to answer any questions as well. Thanks, Chris. So as we get started today, I wanted to note that we do have a um, a recording on the engineering program as a whole for the global internship program. So I'm going to be a little brief in terms of some of the program overview and eligibility from the UCLA side, giving the majority of the time discuss Berlin specifically, the program there, as well as um, some feedback from the students that have done this program in the past. So if you are interested a little bit more in the the placement process um, requirements to apply, um, you can find those on the uh, Berlin Global Internship page. We have a video posted there that we recorded um, earlier this week. So today we'll talk a little really briefly uh, about a program overview and then go over to Julie to discuss um, Berlin as a city and place to intern, what your experience might be like. Um, we'll talk a little bit about funding and then we'll throw it over to John and Krish uh, for our student returning panel. So the Berlin program, um, there in Berlin, um, there's some specific engineering sectors that you can intern in. So we like to be specific, we have a few different locations for a global internship program. And so Berlin um, is a uh, best fit for students that are interested in artificial intelligence, computer science, IT, math, stats, big data, programming and coding, product management and software engineering. That said, we do still do have placements in electrical engineering, hardware and mechanical, um, although they are limited. Julia will go a little more in depth regarding this later in the presentation, but just give you a large overview of what to expect in terms of placement opportunities in Berlin. Um, program at the glance. So this program will occur during summer session A10. Specifically, the dates are June 24th through August 17th is when you would be in Berlin. And then there's online coursework for 10 weeks from June 24th through August 30th. You will be taking four to eight units of academic credit while you are in Berlin. Um, you need eight units to be eligible for financial aid. And these are academic unpaid internships. So we'll talk a little bit more about why you might be interested in doing an internship for academic credit in a little bit um, in terms of just the experience that you'll gain. Uh, internship hours are approximately 32 hours per week. So uh, conducting, uh, you know, four days a week of internship and around 32 hours, depending on your placement. Eligibility criteria must be engineering major or minor, 3.0 GPA, uh, 90 units by spring, 2024. So even if you're applying in fall and don't quite have those 90 units, that's fine as long as you can get 90 units by spring 2024 prior to starting the program and having good academic standing. Uh, the coursework uh, included is Engineering 195 for four units, as well as CESC 130, which is an intercultural communication course in the global workplace. Uh, the CSC 130 uh, does satisfy the social analysis GE for engineering majors. Um, also, it's it's important to note these are asynchronous courses. Um, the only time that you will be meeting, or I guess I should take that back, uh, they're majority asynchronous. Um, engineering 195, you will meet once per week um, as a group. So that usually has taken place historically um, in the evening time. This past year was on Thursday evening, um, which would have been Friday, Thursday morning in Los Angeles. Um, CSC 130 is totally asynchronous um, for students. 
And the application is currently open. So you can apply between now and November 27th. And your application will be treated equally uh, at any time that you apply. Just note that uh, Julia and her team uh, will be conducting advising sessions for, as the second step in the application process. And once you apply, you can conduct that step at any point in time. So I always encourage students to apply early because the sooner you apply, the sooner you can do that advising session. If you apply like 90% of students on the last day or close to the last day, then that advising session will oftentimes occur during um, you know, 10th week, finals week, or during your winter break. So I always encourage students to do it earlier so it doesn't conflict with your coursework. And let's throw it over to Julia now to talk a little bit about the Berlin program. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so yeah, once again, my name is Julia Wittig and I'm the internship program manager for CIEE in Berlin. Um, I live in Berlin and I've also lived here for about 10 years. Uh, and the last two years have collaborated with Andrew and Anna and UCLA on the summer internship programs in Berlin. So looking forward to this next cohort uh, this upcoming summer. Um, so my role in this process, as Andrew already alluded to, is working together with UCLA to determine a fit for the internship program, um, advising you on your placement possibilities in Berlin um, using my local knowledge. Um, and then once you are admitted into the program, I would also uh, work with you on your internship placement. Um, so once the summer rolls around, I will remain a resource to you while in Berlin, uh, I host the orientation sessions um, and uh, accompany you on excursions and just am you know, a general resource to you while you're, while you're here in Berlin. Um, so I'll use the next 15-ish, 15 minutes, hopefully I'll try and be brief, 15-ish minutes to um, provide you with a short introduction to Berlin, talk a bit more about what it's like to intern in Berlin, uh, share something about the student life components of the program, um, show you a short video about the internship placement process, and then also provide you with some tips for success. We have our student returnees here as well, so I also will turn to them for their real hand account of their experiences interning in Berlin, um, but we'll already give you a bit of a bit of context. Um, all right, so next slide, please. All right, so a short intro to Berlin. Uh, Berlin is the capital of, of Germany. Uh, the city is located in the northeastern part of the country. Um, it's got a population of about 3.7 million. Um, Germany has a reputation as a country of being quite stable, of being wealthy. Uh, Germans have a reputation for being punctual, maybe orderly and rigid, maybe a bit older in terms of population or demographics, potentially also being relatively conservative. These are all, I would say, stereotypes and to a certain extent truths about Germany as a country. However, Berlin is not Germany. Uh, Berlin is very young. Berlin is very international. Berlin is very creative and made up of free thinking people. Um, it's famous for having a very vibrant, uh, creative and cultural scene, um, for being a place where people will go to be different or think differently to create and have certain freedoms that they might not have had elsewhere. Um, and until recently, also Berlin was very affordable and actually still is in very many ways compared to other major European cities, um, which has made it, allowed it to be a playground for people to try new things, to experiment. Um, so, you know, you really can't afford to think outside the box and trial and error your ideas. Um, so back in the 90s, this this kind of translated to Berlin becoming the, the epicenter of uh, Berlin or Germany's cultural scene and music scene, you know, it's quite famous for, for techno um, and for these kind of crazy large clubs and these abandoned industrial buildings. Um, but more recently, Berlin has really evolved into a, a really fertile environment for startups, for entrepreneurially minded people, um, and for innovators. And this, this culture of creativity and innovation in lifestyle and culture and now in technology um, is, I would say, largely due to the city having been destroyed, then divided, um, and now rebuilding itself. Right? Over the last 30 years, the city's been rebuilding itself and redefining itself, which does allow for people to kind of participate in that process and um, experiment. Um, so I won't go into too many details about this. And if you do come to Berlin, you'll you'll see this history uh, present in so many aspects of the city's contemporary culture and, and urban structure. Um, but in short, Berlin is now known as being the startup capital of Europe. So next slide, please. 
And why I am telling you this um, is because this is the context that we find ourselves in, in terms of uh, the ecosystems that many of our internship opportunities exist in, in Berlin. Um, so in terms of engineering opportunities, we, we do work primarily uh, with, with tech startups um, who are really looking for interns within the fields of, of software development, of data analytics, data science, um, AI, machine learning, um, product management, um, and, and similar types of, 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 uh, of roles and fields. Um, the types of sectors that we generally uh, work with or that are represented within our network are um, health tech, med tech, green tech, mobility tech, and, and e-commerce, I would say are kind of the large uh, umbrella umbrella sectors, um, but of course there is there are more. Um, and software companies really are the most highly represented within the Berlin tech uh, sector um, for a number of reasons that we can also go into at a later later point. Um, and there really aren't therefore as many opportunities for students with interest in mechanical uh, or electrical engineering or aerospace or robotics and things like that. So just to you know reiterate what, what Andrew mentioned earlier. Um, so as mentioned, we do primarily, oh, sorry, go back one. Yes, sorry, thanks. Um, we do primarily work with startups and, and small businesses. Um, so we do not work as much with large companies, multinationals, or highly specialized companies. So just, just to keep that in mind, we really do primarily focus on uh, working with smaller companies and startups. Um, so that is something to keep in mind as well. And I'll talk a bit more about what kinds of opportunities that might present to you as a student and as an intern, um, but just to kind of yeah keep that in mind. And um, if for those of you that do study or have an interest in mechanical or electrical engineering, um, it will generally be at a smaller scale, um, be potentially usually involving prototyping, R and D, and and things like that. And I think John can also speak a bit more to his experience within that sector later on. Um, so as mentioned, yeah, interning in Berlin, um, it does provide a, a, a more hands-on experience. So working in a startup, you're working in a smaller team, you're working directly with, with founders, with key decision makers, you're actually contributing to the, the development of, of the company's product and process. Um, so it does provide you with an opportunity to really make an impact and learn in a very hands-on way. Um, what this does mean, however, for, um, you know, working in a startup is that there is a specific work culture. Um, and it might, again, be different to what you expect from the, the German workplace. Um, so in, in startups, for example, uh, there's generally a flatter hierarchy. Um, you're given a lot of independence in how you complete your work. Um, it's generally pretty hands on, um, which, again, allows you the opportunity to really try out new skills, uh, provide and add value and test out some of the things you've been learning in school in a, in a, in a real business setting. So really exciting in that, in that context. Um, however, this type also, the type of work also does require a certain amount of comfort with ambiguity, right? Um, comfort with, with be working independently and, and being a problem solver. Um, and also it does require proactivity. And these are qualities that our supervisors really look for in, in interns is really, uh, you know, independent problem solving, proactive, um, and and hand, and you know not afraid of being hands on in in their approach to problem solving. So something to keep in mind as well. Um, and for more specific examples of of past placement ideas or areas, rather, uh, you can visit the yeah UCLA um, IEO website. And Andrew here has shown a slide that indicates where you can click to uh, check out the pamphlet, and you can click through some of the uh, past placement areas that UCLA students have worked worked with worked in. Um, so definitely take a look at that. Um, generally, this is not a a guaranteed placement, but it's more just to give you an idea of types of projects that students might be working on. And All just right. to just to add as well, it's not an exhaustive list too. So um, just please yeah. note that there are more opportunities. Um, again, just to kind of just meant to give you a an idea of what past students have done, um, and to see what types of roles they might have done, you know, completed you know, during their time in their internship. Exactly. Great. Yeah, so in addition to the internship, there are also, of course, other program components. Um, so we will hold an on-site orientation for you all once you arrive, um, including some important orientation sessions, including welcome dinner, a walking tour. Um, in terms of housing, there isn't all that much that I can say here besides the fact that you will be in a either a shared dorm or shared apartment, depending on availability, um, and that you will be in a, in a double room. 
Um, and we also have a number of other internship programs that are on site in Berlin um, during the summer. And so we also try and organize different opportunities for you all to get to know each other. Um, in some cases, you might even be colleagues if you are placed in a company that has interns from other programs, uh, but generally also through mixers, interest groups or events, things like that. We'll try and get you all connected to each other as well. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, there will also be a number of cultural activities and professional development activities. Also, in addition to your internship, um, I'll just try to schedule these for the evenings or afternoons so it doesn't conflict too much with your work day. I also try to avoid weekends because I realize that you all want to travel and you know explore your city, city independently. Um, so we really try and integrate this into your into your you know your your Monday through Friday week. Um, some examples of previous activities have included uh, like a spray river boat tour, visiting the Dark Matter exhibition, tour of Olympic Stadium, Temple of Airport tour. I'll let John and Chris share on which excursions they like the most and which they like the least. I know the URF campus visit did not go over very well with your group, but um, we also, in addition to the kind of more historical and cultural um, opportunities, also try and connect you uh, through the program with opportunities to get to know more about um, the, the topics that you're thinking about in, in, your, in the context of your university, how they kind of show in, in Berlin. So we try and also bring in a bit of professional, uh, professional life and visiting you know, other workplaces um, in the course of the program as well. All right, if you can go to the next slide. All right, we're moving on. Oh, one back. A bit about the placement process. So we'll just spend two minutes watching the video. And if you have any questions, you can always uh, let me know or we can spend some time answering questions afterwards as well. Go ahead and thank you. There doesn't seem to be sound for me, Andrew. I don't know. For the rest of you, do you do you hear sound? There's no sound for me either. Oh. Mm. Well, we'll move on if there's no sound. Sorry, I'm not sure what's going on. But this video is posted on our website. So um, it's under the placement process page on the website. Um, so you can review it there. But just as some general tips, um, you will apply for the program initially through UCLA. We'll verify your, um, your eligibility for the program. And then if you're eligible, we will move along to uh, having an advising session with Julia or her team in Berlin, um, where they will review kind of your, um, your career goals, interests, qualifications, experience. Um, it's a way to kind of vet you as a candidate also a, a way for you to um, you know, ask questions about the experience in Berlin, more specifically the opportunities to see if it's a good fit on your end. And then in middle of January, we will provide feedback on acceptance notifications. So you'll know if you're stepping into the program and you'll be provided a timeline to put down a $300 deposit, which is approximately one week after being accepted into the program. Um, in mid-February is either final payment or financial aid uh, requirements are due in order to um, secure your spot for the actual summer so that we can begin planning housing and all of the logistics for the program. And then beginning, generally, I would say with the Berlin Group, uh, approximately the start of April, is that correct, Julia, is when the placement process begins? Um, and that will last, um, could last, uh, you know, depending on how quick it is for your placement, could last a few weeks, it could last up to two months. Um, so it really depends on your career goals, interests and availability. But usually between April, start of April and the end of May is when the placement process occurs and you will have your placement before you do go abroad to Berlin. And I'll throw it back to Julia. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, just my final my final comment here um, is just some tips for success, both in terms of preparation for the application process, but then also if you are admitted to the program and if you do come to Berlin, uh, some things to keep in mind and to bring with you. Um, I'll try and keep it very brief because I want to give John and Chris the chance to also share their experience. But generally, I would say, especially working within the Berlin context, and I think generally even in most engineering fields, um, in your you know in your in your future, it's really important to focus not only on hard skills, but also on those soft skills, right? So like I mentioned, supervisors are looking not only for your, your ability to use CAD and whatever other software or hardware or software skills you have, but also they want you to, they want to know how you problem solve. They want to know how you collaborate. They want to know how you ask questions, how you engage, how you manage your time. So these are all things to really keep in mind as you begin to kind of uh, build yourself up as a candidate. Um, 
So I'll let you go ahead and read the slide for yourselves, but just yeah, keep in mind that there's a lot more to uh, success in an internship than just your hard skills. Um, so definitely try and bring those to the front of your mind as you move forward through the application process. And then once you do end up coming to Berlin, hopefully. All right, I will think end it there um, and let Andrew you take it over again. Yeah, and I'll just go over this really briefly. Um, so just note that there are opportunities to fund the program when you do uh, make it out to or accept it into the program and do decide to go to Berlin. Um, it, all programs for global internships are eligible for financial aid. So again, you'll want to be sure to take uh, two courses, so eight total units to be eligible for aid and to fill out your FAFSA or DREAM Act by the priority deadline, which is in March. Um, there's some additional paperwork that you would receive uh, access to once you apply um, in order to submit a official global internship financial aid application, um, but that won't occur until you have actually applied to the program and have been accepted. Financial aid will take into consideration the total cost, and we'll show that in a minute here, um, which also includes estimated costs for your flight, meals, and incidentals. Um, there are a lot of different scholarship opportunities as well we want you to be aware of, um, and these are available on our website um, under the Finances uh, tab, and you will see that there are um, multiple scholarships, including the Global Internship Scholarship for $3,000, the European Undergraduate Scholarship, the Wang Middle Income Scholarship, um, as well as if you're a Pell Grant eligible, the Gilman Scholarship provides up to $5,000 worth of funding, so all great opportunities to fund your study abroad experience. Um, and so we wanted to just note as well, which John and Chris will talk about as well, um, is it's not all just work. Um, there is a lot of fun times that you will be having with your cohort and uh, the other folks you might meet either um, through CAE or just on, you know, through your workplace and the program. So here's a few photos from this past summer's group. Um, Nicholas Isley, which is actually summer 2022, so not this past summer, uh, said I've always wanted to see the world from the other side. And this program allowed me to live life of a Berliner. And so without further ado, I want to bring on our panelists, um, both John Villalobos and Chris Patel. Um, I know you both did a short introduction at the start, but maybe uh, start with you, John. Can you, again, uh, say a little bit about where you interned and maybe the main you know, uh, projects you worked on while you were there? Yeah, so um, I worked at Trainum, which is a, mainly, it's a fitness company that works on fitness products. And... My main responsibilities there were um, basically manufacturing and um, going over the process of speeding up um, how we make the product. Because like before, it was it took a really long time to do some like parts of the product. Like it could take hours to like sand and then um, cut the parts and everything. So then um, what me and Peter did, the other intern that um, worked there, where um, we created some jigs to basically place the parts like the piece of wood and like fix the piece of wood in a part where you could just cut it super easily at like a, the specified geometry that we needed and we I also worked like on the vibrational motor system to um, be, uh, work on the molding and like casting of future products for the company and um, and then Another thing that I worked on was I, Peter and I were working on like a portable like pull up system so we could go and market the products around Berlin and bike around Berlin. And yeah, that was, that was what my, my instrument mainly consisted of. If I remember correctly, you both, you and Peter were able to do demos for folks in Berlin. Is that correct? Of the product? Yeah, we, we did a little bit. It was towards the end of the internship, but um, that was like the, by the time we finished everything, the internship ended and then we had to, you know, head back home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll throw it now over to Chris. Uh, same question. It's a little more about your uh, specific internship placement and some of the projects you worked on while you were there. Yeah, absolutely. So I interned this past summer at Motion Tag, which is a small startup that deals with mobility, informatics, and analytics. And so I was mostly um, applying data science principles to the data that they have collected that is like querying the back end um, and retrieving the data and then doing aggregations on it, groupings, et cetera, to get statistics from it. And then my final deliverable uh, consisted of refactoring and fleshing out this traffic flow visualization that we had. For example, there's this other city right on the Western border of Germany called Aachen, 
And we had like the map of the street network with the geometries associated with it. And we had a large user base there as well. So we were able to get like kind of a heat map of um, the specific streets that were most frequented. And that was very rewarding to get done. So. And maybe another fault on that, Krish, uh, for a second question. What are some of the transferable skills you took away from that experience that you might use in a future job or in academics here at UCLA? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess the literal answer would be I learned an entirely new programming language in the form of R, which is a statistical programming language uh, during my time there. But I think the better answer would probably probably be uh, it taught me a lot of meta skills in terms of working whilst learning new technologies and kind of um, picking those up as you go, as well as, of course, all of the all of the kind of softer skills of interacting in a workforce, especially when my team comprised of so many people from diverse and international backgrounds. And uh, a lot of the times it was a mix of remote and in-person. So uh, getting accustomed to all of that was definitely something I highly valued uh, attaining from the program. Thank you, Krish. And same question for you, John. What sort of transferable skills do you feel like you took away from the experience? Um, the main transferable skills that I took away from the experience was communication because working with like a German boss, there's some stuff that can be lost in trend or like communication. So like I could be joking around some about something and then he'll take it seriously and then I'll have to explain it or like vice versa. Or sometimes when um, you're trying to tell each person person like instructions or like how to do something um it could be super complicated so that would be like the biggest thing it would be like how to be detailed in my communication and um leave like zero room for um or, or, or minimal room not zero because <laughs> you can't be perfect but you could always try to be perfect and um also one of the main skills was um how to like balancing um work with life outside of berlin or outside of or in berlin and um, those were super like important to me and valuable um, skills that I learned in, in Berlin. And as, as Julie had mentioned, John, earlier, um, uh, there are limited opportunities maybe for mechanical engineers in, in Berlin, but obviously this is an opportunity for you to, to kind of, uh, you know, uh, still focus on your, your career field. Um, do you feel, what was it like working at a startup and do you feel, you know, you got more hands-on experience or what was, you know, what, what do you think, you know, was, was valuable of working specifically with Trainum that uh, maybe was unique to this uh, program? Um, you definitely got a lot of hands-on experience. Like the first day I got there, we started welding and he taught us how to weld and we did like a little workshop. And then soon after we started like just building a lot of prototypes or they're, they're like, since it's a startup and they have limited like funding. Um, we built a lot of stuff from um, things that we found like in the garbage in the back or, um, <laughs> or like the recycling bins. So um, it was very hands on because you're prototyping everything and the turnaround times are super quick or they want them to be quick. So um, you build a lot of stuff in, in person and right there at the workplace versus like an in industry. A lot of people, like you build something and you send it out to like a manufacturer to make, and then you have to wait like a couple weeks. And then, but here in Berlin at a startup, like you think of something, you design it like in a day, and then the next day you build it. So it's it's super super hands on, and um, it definitely teaches you a lot about how um, mechanical systems work and um, how to improve them. Excellent. And I'll, I'll throw it to you, Chris, with a different question. Um, what would you say your day-to-day -day life was like as an intern in Berlin? Um, how would you describe, you know, your general work week and kind of what you fit into it? Yeah, definitely. So I was fortunate enough to have a supervisor that allowed me to manage my own time at the internship, so long as I met the 32-hour quota. And so I chose to distribute that as typically going in every day of the week, though I know many other interns uh, wanted to have Fridays off, but I went in every day, typically from 10 to four, but sometimes later, depending on circumstances. And yeah, it was about a 30 minute commute through the German U-Bahn subway system. And that was a lot of fun as uh, we don't really have public transportation like that here, but essentially I, in the morning we have a stand up, which is common practice 
amongst uh, tech companies where everyone kind of details what they worked on and what they're going to work on. And then from there on, you simply begin picking up tickets, which is like the granularity of task that we designate under the agile system. And so I'd work on those, uh, have lunch with colleagues sometime in the afternoon, and then uh, kind of pick up from there. Excellent. Thank you, Krish. And um, another question I wanted to ask was, what, uh, you know, what do you feel like uh, you got out of this experience that maybe is unique to what you might have got out of experience interning locally in the U.S.? I guess this could be for either either of you. Why might a student decide to conduct an internship through this program versus conduct one locally? Uh, sure, I'll go ahead and answer that, I guess. Um, in terms of the actual experience, like outside of the internship, I think the benefits are pretty obvious, so I won't get into them too much. I mean, Berlin is a fantastic city, and it's a lot of fun to be able to explore it. But what I found and what initially, not to say surprised me, but was somewhat more unexpected was um, being in Berlin affords you opportunities because just because you're in this massive cultural hub in Europe uh, instead of uh, in the United States. And in my case, that opportunity was being able to deal with all of this data regarding uh, public transportation companies because they have this vast array of transit systems in Europe that, like I've already mentioned multiple times, we just don't have here. And so I can't envision having had this, a similar experience in terms of being able to analyze data had I done this locally. Um, and moreover, considering Berlin is so international, I think it definitely um, accelerated the rate at which I picked up some soft skills because not only was I pretty much interning for the first time, but I was inter interning in such a diverse context that I had to pay extra attention and mindfulness to exactly how I was communicating. And so I think those skills were augmented as a result. Thank you, Krish. And then last question for you, John, what was your, um, you can pick, what was your either your favorite experience while in Berlin, your most memorable, or what advice would you give to a future applicant considering the program that you wish you would have known beforehand? Um, that's tough, because I do have a lot of favorite memories there it was an amazing time and uh, um but i would say my probably my one of my mem most memorable experience there was um just one day um everybody got off of work we all ubon back to the to cie and then afterwards we all went to the park to go play um soccer or we initially went to go play soccer but then the soccer field was taken up so then we went to go play basketball and then as we were playing basketball, there were some, like, um, German kids playing around. And then one of them came up to us and then tried talking to us. But then we told him uh, we don't speak German. <laughs> and then um, the rest of the, the night, basically, as it went along, we were kind of Google translating stuff to him. <laughs> and then he also was just playing with us and... Um, and then we just played basketball with him. We taught him how to play basketball because he was playing soccer earlier. And then he didn't like it's not as common for people to play basketball. So then we um, started teaching him how to play basketball. And then and then ever since that day, we would always see him walking around the corner like um, like there's like corner stores where you could buy like food or like water, like snacks. And then anywhere we would walk, we'd always just see him. His name was Yusuf. And then he, he became like a legend within our friend group. So then every time somebody saw him, everybody would be like, oh, that, that was Yusuf. And then um, they just tell us a little story about what was going on. So I think Yusuf definitely was a big part of it, of, of Berlin. But yeah, like lear um, learning how to interact with the locals and their culture and experiencing something different than over here in the U.S. Um, was the biggest part I enjoyed about um, Berlin. And that was the most memorable. They were all so welcoming. I didn't expect them to be so welcoming. Like I, I expect, like I expected like your German typical or your typical German and then them being like uptight. But the majority of them were like super chill, wanting to get to know you and show you around. And um, that made it super fun. 
Thank you, John. Um, and I'll throw the same question to you, Chris. Um, John, I know you need to head to class soon, so if you need to, to head out, um, that's totally <laughs> fine. But uh, I appreciate your time. And um, we'll throw it to Chris, and then we'll wrap up the presentation. What was your favorite moment, Chris, of experience on the program? Oh, sure. Um, I do have a question regarding that, though, Andrew, really quick. Am I allowed to talk about a travel experience that may not have been in Berlin, or should I keep it localized? Maybe keep it local to Berlin. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. That would be great. Yeah. Okay, for sure. So uh, we went on this little stadium tour, an excursion that uh, Julia kindly hosted for us at the Olympic Stadium. And it was so cool being able to go inside the locker rooms where uh, many famous and professional footballers uh, or soccer players here have, have uh, of course, visited and where the Olympics, I believe, were were held in 1936 but we got to do that we got to go on the roof and that and honestly all of the other excursions as well were always extremely fun just because it was us in our cohort and throughout the program i'm fortunate enough to say that we all became very close and so spending time with them after work was definitely something i looked forward to every day and believe me we did a lot of that so that, that was a lot of fun Thank you, Chris, and thank you, John, for both of your feedback. Um, just wanted to make a note that if you're interested in connecting with Chris or John or any of our other engineering ambassadors, you'll notice on our website uh, under the Global Internships page, there is a student ambassador section, and you can search both by location in terms of Berlin as well as by major engineering. And so you can reach out to them, ask your questions in regards to their experience, um, and any feedback they have as your peer um, to discuss what you might want to prepare before you go abroad or what it might be like. Um, they're there to assist. And just as we wrap up, just want to make note as well that if you have any questions about the application process, logistics, um, uh, just any anything that you're, you know, doubts that you have about the program, either while you're applying or once you have applied, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'm happy to uh, to be of assistance. My email is abottom at ieo.ucla.edu. Thank you all so much for joining us, Julia, John, and Chris. Um, appreciate your time. And we hope to see all of you on the Berlin program this upcoming summer. And again, please reach out if you have any questions or doubts. Have a great afternoon, everyone.